The Chiefs have the best record in the NFL. Pat Mahomes is setting records, and this defense isn't so bad. I got more about the game against the Cleveland Browns coming at you right now. Welcome back to RGR Football. I'm Ryan, and this is me going rogue. Uh, for all of you that are back, welcome back. It's another week, and the Chiefs have uh, maintained themselves in performing against a Cleveland Browns team that was uh, you know, kind of at a disadvantage to begin with, uh, but they did their part. But the big news is that the Rams have gone out and lost themselves the best record in the NFL. They're now tied with the Chiefs at 8-1, and one, and this showdown that's coming against them in Mexico City looks to be the game of the season as we get closer and closer. So enjoy that this week. Uh, the other thing that you have to enjoy is just how consistent Patrick Mahomes is. Uh, at this point, he is fourth all-time for touchdown passes in a season to start it. Uh, and, you know, and here's the thing. The guys that he's up there with are Peyton Manning twice and Tom Brady. So, again, this is this is more than the kid learning the offense. This is more than the kid taking the next step forward. Pat Mahomes is a force, and he continues to be. No one's figured it out. I don't know that anyone's going to figure it out. But we're going to talk about that and how he's doing it here in a second, as well as what's going on with the pass rush, and this rookie crew of defenders that are starting to come on, we're going to talk about them, uh, the O-line, and a little bit of what the future might hold as we look at some of the plays that happen against the Browns. Uh, but for those of you that are new, I'm Ryan. I appreciate you joining. Uh, make sure you hit the little subscription button and the bell notification. Leave us a comment and a thumbs up if you like what you see here. Uh, and for those of you that have been around quite a bit, it, we keep growing and you're part of the community. It's great to see you all again. And I really appreciate everything you guys have done. Let's talk about Pat Mahomes. There's so much to talk about. We're going to look at a play here in a little bit that is really probably the best throw of the season that I've seen him make. Um, it's just too much all the time. But let's take a step back for a second because uh, not only is this, what, nine games into his season as the starter, but 10th game of his career. He's averaging 300 yards a game. 3,000 in the first 10 games of his career. That is just phenomenal. I, I know that it's not the same way it used to be where 300 yards was a, you know, an elite game. It's not that way anymore in the NFL. But it's still a significant stepping stone. It, that is, is a marker that still puts you in the upper echelon when you're throwing for 300 a game. So, enjoy that. And here's the thing, is it's his eighth straight. Uh, he is pushing the boundaries of what any rookie quarterback has ever done. And he has put himself, again, in rarefied air because the only guy who's done it more than this, uh, the only guy that's hit nine games in a row at three, uh, 300 yards passing is Drew Brees. Now, Drew's done it twice, so you know you got to give him credit for that. But there's only one other guy. If Pat comes out against these cards and can throw for 300, he's going to tie him. And that's an accomplishment in and of itself. And then that, that makes the next game even more important. So it, it's time to revel in what he does. Um, there's so many throws that we can look at. But the one in particular has uh, a really great view that the Chiefs put out, as well as uh, we're going to look at the film right here. Chiefs got exactly the look they were looking for at this point with a cover too deep with linebackers dropping. Uh, one in particular more so than the other. As we see the other view, 54 is going to fake blitz. He's not going to be able to get as deep once the play starts, whereas 51 is going to get deeper on the opposite side. You have the high safety to Kelsey's side looking at him one-on-one. -on -one. Kelsey gives him this little swivel to the outside, cuts back underneath it. The linebacker is not deep enough, and the safety is beaten right here. He elevates Mahomes put it up where only he can get it. He comes down with it, and no other defender had a chance. And from here, you see it from ground level. Now, you can't take anything away from that. That's incredible. And I, I have a feeling that we're not going to see the end of these incredible throws from Mahomes. Not just, and this is the biggest takeaway for me, not on the run. Out of the pocket, with a, a nice pocket to step up into, did his thing perfectly. And I expect to see a lot more of that. 
Now, I want to shift gears because we spend so much time talking about the offense, and we will talk about it more, uh, in particular the running back and the offensive line here in a little bit. But we need to focus on this defense because there are things going on that I don't think we're necessarily always aware of. Uh, and in particular, a, a much maligned position group that I have been concerned about for several years. But it comes in, in a time when, across the NFL, things are changing, especially at the cornerback position. Uh, and, and this really came to show that what the difference is 2017 to 2018. Uh, we know that the Chiefs chose to move on from Marcus Peters, and it looks like they abandoned him at the right spot because his season has tanked. Uh, and really what is really gratifying to see is that the Chiefs made that decision and have been able to improve their roster over Marcus Peters in 2018. In fact, they have three corners that are better than Marcus Peters in 2018 in terms of how much passer rating they give up, how many yards they give up, etc., etc. Peters is having a terrible season by all accounts, including his own. But the thing is, you go a little bit behind the scenes and you realize just how good Orlando Skandrick is playing. And the fact that his veteran presence, and that's really what it is, because he does hold a lot. I, I, I won't try to even argue that he doesn't. But he knows how to do that. He, he knows the intricacies of the game. And he is performing at a season level right up there with some of the best. You look at, say, last week, and you see just how good the Chiefs' corners were against a wide receiving group that is has got some serious talent, including Jarvis Landry, but not only Jarvis Landry. And as they go on, Steve Nelson, I think, is the unsung hero here. It's just three in the top 15 is one thing for, for week nine. And when I look at PFF, that's what it is. All three of the Chiefs starting corners were in the top 15 in the NFL for week nine. But the guy that stood out the most is Steven Nelson. We're going to look at some of his plays here too. But Steve is a guy that is outplaying his size and outplaying his contract by a long shot. Again, with a contract year. There are a number of Chiefs that are in that position, and they need to play up to that standard uh, and surpass it, quite honestly, in order to get their next contract, which more than likely, and the more that it goes on, is going to be outside of Kansas City. But Steve Nelson has come to play. He is not messing around, especially against what is, I think, in Cleveland, a wide receiving group that could have given him trouble. Uh, he's got a size disadvantage to a couple of guys. He's got a speed disadvantage to a couple of guys, yet he brought the hammer, he played tight coverage, he made plays, he made one big mistake. And he let, he let a guy who has great speed get behind him, a guy that he has the disadvantage to, and he shook it off like a corner should. One play at a time, forget the last one. He came back and makes a play where he sets the rookie quarterback up, thinking that he's out of the play, comes underneath and makes that interception. Uh, Steve Nelson on the year now has more interceptions than he's allowed touchdowns. That's a key stat that no one talks about. And it's important here because passer rating is an overall stat. And, and you can look at yardage as well. He d has given up a lot of yardage. When he's made mistakes, they have been costly in terms of yardage. But only giving up one touchdown and having two interceptions now, that's not what you would expect from Steven Nelson. It'd be something similar to what you would hope you would have gotten from Peters last season. Uh, and when you add in Skandrick and Fuller and their experience and what they're able to do right now, this cornerback group, while they do give up yards, they are playing their game the way they want to, and it's being effective. It's keeping points off of the board. And that is critical for what the Chiefs need to do going forward as they play teams that have the Cooper Cups of the world, that have the Tyrell Williams of the world, and uh, the Keenan Allens. There's a whole lot to talk about here, uh, specifically with the Chargers, but I think I'm going to do that in the next video uh, for the game plan coming up. So that's really where it's at, and I think that's going to be the final test that they're going to see uh, before the regular season kind of winds up with a wide receiver group that can give them a lot of fits. Now, when it comes to the pass rush, we still haven't seen Justin Houston, although he practiced a bit last week. It looks like he's going to practice more this week. Uh, and that's a great sign for what the Chiefs have to do. But right now, they're in a great position in terms of what they've been able to do. They are fourth in sacks, and they've only allowed 12 on the offensive side. So when you look at the differential from a team standpoint, the Chiefs are well ahead of where they were a season ago or where they need to be. And a lot of that is due to D Ford. Uh, the pass rush against the Cleveland Browns was a little disappointing, only because the matchup should have been epic for them to produce and get home, and not just pressures, but sacks. Didn't happen. 
for whatever reason it was, it just didn't quite happen. I will give it that Baker Mayfield did get the ball out fairly quickly uh, and fairly consistently at that point. Uh, and when you have a blind ref making a call on the one big play that D4 did make, you can't really go around that. But uh, the bigger thing is that it, it, the thing that's allowing D4 to have that season is the emergence of Breland Speaks. And as much as uh, he has looked out of shape at times and not quick at times, uh, he had a good comment last week. And if you missed that, go check out Film Room from last week. Uh, his comments on his own performance were, were interesting. But he's, he's steadily making progress, and I saw a lot more of it again this last week. Uh, again, the pass rush didn't get there. I, I didn't see him really pushing what should have been uh, a matchup that he should have taken advantage of. I was a little disappointed in that. But playing in the field, uh, setting the edge against the run was there. We saw him do a couple of things that really looked like he, he's starting to click. Uh, his acceleration, his, his instincts are taking over a little bit. Uh, we saw him in coverage make a couple of nice things, or at least be in position uh, to do his job and maintain the flat and, and make tackles where he should. He is not the liability that he was a few weeks ago. And that's really allowing them to not focus on D Ford, uh, both in the run or the pass. And as we go along, it's going to be even more important because uh, Breland played about 85% of the snaps and Tano Passanio did play a bigger percentage. I know a lot of you have been wanting to see more Tano. And he did play more against the Browns in terms of the snap count, but clearly they are still concerned about something with him because they, they are focused in on Breland Speaks, and I think he's still responding. I think you're going to see more from him, and as he continues to face uh, good players that he can learn more from, I think you're going to see him improve through the season. He's got the beef about him to not get wore down as much. Some of the speed rushers like D Ford have a tendency to, to struggle there at the last few weeks of the regular season and into the postseason. I don't think you're going to see that from Speaks. I see him still as an ascending player that's still getting better, and I think that's something that we should be more cognizant of, and we should talk about that more in terms of analysts and fans. But it's, it's important to go on because as Justin Houston gets back, having a third pass rusher that can actually produce is the key to, to taking the step forward in the postseason. That's where all of this has to be heading. At the end of the day, it's about getting farther, getting to the AFC Championship, getting to the Super Bowl now. And it's not something that we get to say as, as, as Chiefs analysts very often, but the Super Bowl is the focus. It has to get there. This is too good a run to let it slip through their hands. So the pass rush will be all important come the postseason. Now I want to take a minute and just talk about, we looked at the pass earlier to Travis Kelsey, and, and I think one thing that goes without saying is that Travis Kelsey is excellent in his position, but even more so. I know folks are concerned that he looks maybe a step slower, but he's running better routes. I think he's more concentrated on how he fits within the offense rather than his piece when he gets the ball in his hand. Uh, and, and I'm seeing a bit of maturity come from Travis Kelsey that I think is really, really important. And he, he has had a drop or two. Uh, in fact, the, the Chiefs are not uh, near the top of, of the league in terms of not dropping passes. They are, they are towards the bottom part. But I think Kelsey's been shown that he can be counted upon. He's not the hothead he used to be. I, I think that it should be said out loud. Uh, same for Kareem Hunt. Just keeps chugging along. Doesn't matter whether he gets three carries in a half like, like he did against the Browns and just does clean up the rest of the, of the game or, or not. He is producing both in the pass game and the rush game. Uh, again, he is another guy that should be an MVP candidate out there as well. Just not going to happen with his quarterback on the same team. But that said, the, the unsung heroes of both of these things are the offensive line. To have so many injuries with two of your starters out and to take four guys, four guys that the Cleveland Browns moved on from and put them on this line and line them up last Sunday, that's an impressive feat. And what they did was block their tails off, both in the past pocket game, but in screens as well. And that's really what sprung Kareem Hunt and let him get that long touchdown. Now as the play starts, everybody sets up in a pass, bro. Reader is the key here. He doesn't have a specific block right off the bat. He lingers and lingers, and now he tries to release just as Kareem Hunt does as well. He actually overruns his block, which allows him to turn and seal that particular tackler. Uh, Kareem has to avoid one tackler here uh, that Harris misses the first time, but he's downfield with Kelsey. Both the tight ends are looking for blocks, and Harris makes up for it. He actually 
seals this particular play. The, the combination of all of these guys playing as hard as they are and a quarterback that can take advantage of what he sees when he sees it is a winning combination. The Chiefs are going to have to step on that and keep it through the rest of the year. Now, there are plenty of other guys that made good plays, uh, contributed. Uh, Williams, uh, Dorian Daniel had a couple of nice plays, a couple of things where he got taken advantage of a little bit more, but overall very, very solid as the other rookie, Derek Noddy, another rookie that, that put in quality snaps, had one penalty. I'm uh, not going to hold that against him too much. He plays so strong at the point. He's playing the run very well. He, he's jumping gaps better than I expected him to, and half the time he's, he's a, a tackling machine with one arm. Uh, Derek Noddy's been a really nice surprise at just how well he's been able to make the adjustment to the NFL and how quickly that's happened. So don't worry about Dorian O'Daniel. There's, there's several rookies that are contributing and they're looking just fine. Every now and then they're going to have a uh, step back a little bit, have a struggle game, and that's perfectly fine. It's going to happen to all of them. They're all on the upward trend. Uh, one last guy that I want to point out because I don't think he gets enough attention. Uh, Lucas had a really nice play on the sack. That's true. Had a couple of other assignments that I thought he missed. Um, but the guy that was most solid, I thought, against the Browns was Eric Murray. A guy that had been injured, saw Lucas take some of his snaps. He showed up. He had great open field tackling. He was in his position. He played his zones well. He's settling down a little bit. And if, again, it is the Browns, and this Cardinals game is going to be another one where he's going to be challenged a little bit, but not grossly so. So we're going to wait until we get a little further down the line, but it looks like Eric Murray's starting to become a solid safety that you can leave back there and maybe look to the future to be a guy that can continue to contribute uh, as we look down the line as, as some of these contracts are going to aspire with some of the other safeties. So just want to give him a shout out. I want to give you a shout out. Please let me know what you think in the conversation below in the comments uh, and hit that thumbs up if you like what we're talking about. But overall, I just want to say thank you again to you guys. This last live post game was great. Uh, great turnout. We're going to do it again this next week, and I'm going to do it consistently throughout the season. Uh, the only question will be the wild card weekend where I have something else that's going on, but thank you for all of your time and your effort on this channel, and I'll keep putting my effort in, and we'll keep making videos that make sense. So thank you again, and I will talk to you next time.